With the hype of shows such as The Boys Season 4 and Suicide Squad taking everybody's attention in the small screens and Deadpool and Wolverine conquering the big screen, I haven't seen a lot of people talking about the latest adaptation of DC's favorite masked vigilante. So, as you might have guessed by now, in today's video I'll be talking about Batman Cape Crusader. Batman Cape Crusader is an animated television series produced by Bad Robot Production and developed by Bruce Team, who previously worked on pretty much every series of the now gone DC animated universe, being most known for the creation of the still acclaimed Batman the animated series. Why is this relevant to the topic ahead? Well, initially Warner Bros. Animation approached the team with the idea of producing a revival of the classic animated series, set after the events of the new Batman adventures. But surprisingly, Tim refused. He didn't want to develop a Batman show that was just a continuation of the animated series. However, after a discussion with James Tucker regarding the offer, Tim recalled several ideas he had for the animated series that he was unable to do due to the target audience, particularly having a more of a pulp, serial, mystery, film noir depiction of the character, inspiring him to develop a new series based on those ideas. Tim was later informed by Warner Bros. Animation that J.J. Abrams and the Batman director Matt Reeves were interested in working with him on his new show, so after pitching them his ideas, both Reeves and Adams decided to work on the series that we now know as Batman Cape Crusader. But let's leave the production aspects for a bit and talk about the actual plot of the series. In Batman Cape Crusader, we follow a young Bruce Wayne in the early stages of his crime-fighting career, having to deal with the corruption in Gotham, both from crime organizations and the police, while a new wave of costume criminals is spreading chaos in the streets of Gotham. Set in the 1940s, mainly to further detach it from Tim's previous work, Batman Cape Crusader uses a lot of films and Batman comics released during that period as an influence on the series' portrayal and design of its characters. The series also takes bits of inspiration from classic stories in the Batman mythos, such as Batman Year One, a story in which we follow the ascendance of a young and inexperienced Batman in Gotham, and Batman The Long Halloween, in which we follow the aftermath of Batman's presence in Gotham, putting an end on the mob control in the city and the beginning of crazy costume villains terrorizing the streets of Gotham. First of all, I love the decision of setting the universe in the 1940s. I know that one of the rules in comic books is to never set a specific year in your story because you end up limiting the characters and the story itself at times, but personally, I like it. And in this specific case, it works even better than I expected. And it's probably due to the fact that most of these characters were actually created in the 1940s. As I've said before, the show follows the original stories and designs for most of the main cast, but it also takes some level of creative reimagining with certain characters, most notoriously the gender change of the Penguin and the almost completely reimagining of Harley Quinn, which both work amazingly in my opinion. In previous series, these two specific characters were either the butt of the joke or not taken seriously at all. In Batman Cape Crusader, it's different. The Penguin is a gangster who is willing to do everything to get the upper hand against the competition, ironically making her closer to her comic book counterpart compared to other versions of the character in different shows, and while well, Harley is on a whole other level compared to her original counterpart. I won't say much more about them because I'm trying to keep this video spoiler free, but it's safe to say that I think that those changes were one of the highlights of the show for me. And while we're still on the topic of the villains, I really enjoyed the choice of not going with the most well-known villains in this first season and using characters such as Onomatopoeia, Natalia Knight, Gentleman Ghost and Rupert Thorne. Not to say that I'm tired of characters like the Joker, but I am tired of the Joker. <laughs> Batman has such a vast and interesting rogue gallery that is often dumped in favor of just the Joker, so it was a nice change of pace to get to see more of Batman's rogues gallery. And speaking about Batman, as I said at the beginning of the video, this is a younger Batman, an inexperienced Batman, but Batman nonetheless. I personally think that they nailed the characterization of a young Bruce Wayne whose quest initially starts for vengeance but ultimately end in justice, and even when faced with hard choices, he stays true to what being Batman is all about. <coughs> Take notes, neither. <coughs> Hamish Linkleather did an amazing job voicing both Bruce Wayne and Batman. 
He had some pretty big shoes to fill, replacing Kevin Conroy, but he did great. Now, I do have some little criticisms about Batman Cape Crusader, and these are mainly revolted to one specific character, Harvey Dent. Minor spoilers for those of you who are interested in watching the show, Harvey Dent becomes Two-Face. Yeah, I know, shocking! But jokes aside, I'm gonna try to tackle this without giving too much away. I wasn't a big fan of how they handle Harvey's fall from grace, because technically there was no fall. I'm gonna use as reference the already mentioned Long Halloween and Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. Both are stories that depict the downfall into villainy of Harvey Dent, but different from Batman the Cape Crusader, they work because we're first introduced to Harvey Dent as a symbol of justice, someone who alongside Commissioner Gordon and Batman was genuinely trying to get Gotham rid of crime. And in the show I feel that there wasn't enough of that side of Harvey. Instead, he's shown as an arrogant, selfish man who only cares about Gotham issues because it's convenient for him. By the time they start moving towards Harvey's transformation in Two-Face, we don't get to feel that bad for him. But every cloud has a silver lining. I really enjoyed how they showcased Harvey's mental decline, focusing on the duality of the character, also using him as a sort of cautionary tale for Bruce Wayne in a certain way. In conclusion, is Batman Cape Crusader worth watching? Yes, absolutely. It's a very interesting take on the Batman mythos that both honors its past, ranging from the story to the characters, while also being its own thing, remembering us once more why we enjoy these stories, why we like those characters, and most importantly, why we like Batman. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please leave a like and think about subscribing to the channel for more videos like this one. Also, let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts on Batman the Cape Crusader? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Let me know! So, see you next time! Bye!